Okay, in this video, uh, we're going over uh, line graphs, and um, uh, line graphs are especially useful if you want to show um, a change over a certain amount of time. So, um, as as days or months or weeks or sometimes even hours go by, uh, you want to show that how how something has changed. And maybe um, I don't know how you would. I quantify it, but for every 30 minutes that you run, how tired or how many calories you're using or something like this. Uh, anyway, um, you're going to show, uh, again, it's, it's showing a change uh, over time. And so because of that, uh, usually, almost always, I would say, your x-axis is going to be uh, the time, right? That is the the independent variable, right? So, so as x, your time is going to increment at uh, a steady rate, and then as x um, you know, changes, then uh, your y is going to uh, fluctuate or, or rise up and down depending on uh, how, how long it's been as the time passes. So your x is where your time goes, the y is whatever is changing and uh, the biggest thing, struggle that students have with this, or uh, I think the hardest part about these things, the line graphs for students is to is determining uh, what your um, your scaling on uh, on the graphs, and to make sure that the data is kind of spread out and useful, and it's not all crunched up in one line, uh, and it's not all over the place either, and especially. Uh, can be problematic as to how students use a break in the, in the data or a break in the line, the graph. So, first thing you want to do is choose a scale for the x and y axis and label it. So, uh, the first example here is I have uh, hurricanes per year, the number of hurricanes per year. And these are the years in, in uh, 1999, in the year 2000, 2001, 2002, and so on. So, I'm going to put my time on the bottom here. And when you do this, uh, you really need to go ahead and uh, use a ruler and make sure these things are evenly spaced out, okay? Um, I'm going to be as accurate as possible. So this is going to be 1999. Uh, this is 2000. I'm going to label this uh, years, okay? Go one, go two, go three, and I'm only going up to... So this is the years, uh, and then on my on my uh, y-axis uh, is going to be the numbers of hurricanes. Number of hurricanes uh, per year. And so if I look at my table, I can see that I have between four and nine hurricanes. All of my data is between four and nine. So I'm going to go ahead and start with, with zero, and again, using a ruler, I'm going to mark out increments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? Uh, now, you'll notice, I didn't do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I didn't do one, two, three, oh, I ran out of space, okay? Uh, they're nice and even, and I wanted my data to fit in this much space, so I said, well, if this is about 10, then I want to make my increments so that uh, they're in. I don't have this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can you see how, okay, use, it, use your ruler uh, and space it out, okay? I'm using a whiteboard, so kind of limited here, but make them all even. It's going to give you your best display of data. So uh, now I'm going to plot the data. So in 99, there were eight hurricanes. I'm going to put a dot. Uh, in 2000, there were eight hurricanes. Okay, the spacing between these uh, should all be the same. The spacing between these should all be the same. The spacing between these doesn't have to be the same as these, but all of this spacing needs to be the same. Uh, 2001, there were nine Hurricane. Obviously, if you do this on graph paper, it's much easier to get everything lined up uh, and 
maybe you don't even need to use a ruler as much if you use a, if you're using the graph you know, lines and the graph tapers. Okay, and then last but not least, I'm going to connect all my dots. Okay, now we can see the trend in uh, hurricanes from year to year. There was a uh, very light year of hurricanes in 2002, and uh, but most of the hurricanes are uh, year are between seven and nine. So now, uh, did I miss you? No, but now let's move on to temperatures. This is temps in Okinawa. Average temps in Okinawa. Now, uh, if you look at my data set, of course, uh, well, you probably can tell that the letters represent the month. So January, February, March, April. So I'm going to make even increments. One, two, three. Four, five. Okay, now again, you would use this. Okay, you need to use a ruler and all in that to uh, make those even. And here's here's a uh, now my the. Um, this is in Celsius. The the these are all the highs, the highest temperatures, uh, average temperatures for these months. So the highest average temperature in Jan uh, January was in the twenties, and the highest average temperature in the summer months was thirty two. So I could go ahead and say, well, let's do 10, 20, 30, 40, okay, if I were to do that, then I'm not going to use anything, I'm not going to use half of my graph. Maybe you'll choose to do that, but, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to put what's called a break in the graph, okay? And so a break, now this is important, a break can only happen, it's represented by a little zigzag, okay? can only happen between the origin and your first number, okay? You can't, if I had, if there was some crazy month in here, and like January or something, it was like zero degrees, okay, and then all of the rest was like 20, I can't say, well, here's January as zero, okay, here's zero, and then break my graph here and start at 20, and then 30. Can you see how, you can't, you can't do zero, and then a little, and then a break, and then 20, 30, and this is zero and this is 20. You can't do that. Okay, so the break has to be between zero and the first, uh, the first number. Now, again, I said all of mine are between 20 and 30, so I'm going to start 20 here and I'm going to make 30. Oh, I got to save room for 32. I'll make 32, uh, 30 here. So I'm going to say this is, uh, so I'll do 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 32. Now, once again, you're going to use a ruler, and you're going to make sure that these, all these increments are the same distance, okay? And if you do a break in the graph, the break has to be between the origin and the first number. There's no need to do a break this time-wise, okay? All right, now I'm going to plot all these points. Now let's see, 20, 20, 22. Okay, when you're doing this on your graph paper, right? Here. When you have so many graph paper, all these, you're going to have lines all on here, right? I'm going to August.
Okay, so now I connect these. You can see just as we suspect. All right, obviously the summer months are hotter, duh. Okay, but we can see the trend uh, in the months. Now again, we, we chose to use a, a break for this. If you didn't, then all these will be more shallow, but since we want to show the, the contrast and take up a lot of the space on our graph so that it's more useful, uh, that's why we chose to do the break and we chose to do the scaling as we did. And again, this is going to be temperature. This is going to be months. You need to make sure you label it, okay? Uh, and then the title of the graph would be like temperature change in Okinawa or something like this, okay? So, anyway, that's a quick down and dirty how to do uh, line graphs. Again, they are useful for showing change over time. You need to be really uh, careful that you label all of your axes with numbers and uh, you know, the, the units or whatever it's representing. Uh, a title and do everything neatly with a ruler. Um, so uh, thank you as always for watching.